Time for the other Kenya and tonight we're discussing that topic that's been part of the national agenda for over 50 years, land grabbing, but specific to schools and public institutions. Tonight with me in studio, I've got Irungu Houghton from the Society for International Development, Associate di uh, Director there. And right next to him, we've got Mwaura Shege, an MCA for Ngara Award. We'll be getting to your story in a moment. And right at the end, Abdul Qadir Khalif, a guest here um, once again on, uh, on KT and Weekend Prime from the National Lands Commission. Of course, you can contribute to this discussion. The hashtag tonight is hashtag school grabbers. We're trying to find solutions to what's been happening with respect to the grabbing and encroachment in schools tonight, plus speaking about a number of campaigns around that. But to a statistic, and I'll start with you, Mwaura, yes. um, the statistic that's right now on our video wall, that a majority of the complaints about grabbing and encroachment, especially in Nairobi, this is according to the Matunga report that was commissioned by the governor, Evans mm -hmm. Kidero, mm -hmm. that a majority of these complaints come against the church, mm -hmm. right? Not um, one of the top institutions you'd think about in terms of grabbing the schools. Do you have you have a personal experience with respect to this? I think in, I believe in you. Or just tell us a little bit about that. Well, I thank you, thank you for having us, and thank you for keeping this discussion happening. Um, I represent Ngara. I have uh, eleven um, uh, public schools across, um, you know, high schools, uh, primary schools. There is one particular one, uh, City Primary. City Primary is um, one of, um, you could say, the big. Um, uh, schools around uh, the city where uh, you know Clinton came mm -hmm. when he was uh, visiting the country about uh, free primary education you know um, it's a B and it's very close to the city now um, the cases that we're having especially now with the city primary kind of style is that uh, the encroachment whereby you get into agreements with city hall uh, regarding the usage of uh, playing grounds that is not um, first of all very um, optimal and secondly it does not favor um, either the schooling community or the community around and even city hall if you look at the kind of pricing uh, that is charged because um, the county government never foresaw a situation where uh, they will get themselves in, uh, into leases or agreements that are beyond a weekend yeah, yeah they have a, an agreement for you to use the, a weekend or a weekday and that's it. But if there's anything lengthened uh, in terms of usage, then it doesn't, it was not, first of all, there's no very good uh, legal uh, backing towards it. So if you look at the, the documentation, is kind of flimsy and secondly, does not favor. So if you look at City Primary, for example, um, there is a church inside, um, taken like three or, or so acres um, f at the far end. Uh, it is you would expect that um, the school uh, institution would get maximum benefit of having a big uh, brother, so yeah. to speak, in the, in the school in terms of them benefiting in terms of uh, advantages, probably an, a new coat of paint, um, a better playing field. But the complaints um, uh, have been there from um, old, old students who went to that school. And even the school management, mm -hmm. And is, uh, the school management committee, which runs as boards in schools, do, are not um, part of uh, making that process uh, They're happen. not part of making the decision, the decision with respect to, to, the, to the church. Exactly. exactly. So you look at um, the situation I'm talking about, uh, a certain church has been there for the last two years. Its contract is coming to an end this end of this year. But of the things that they had promised to do to the school, none of them, or they've been done partially or not um, actually exactly what they had said. Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, if you would, uh, the school would want to take action and say, but this is what it was promised, there was nothing so legally binding. There was to nothing force concrete. And, uh, nothing concrete. And if you look at that pattern, and I know that ma ma the Matanga report will give you cases where that is how you start um, the route to grabbing. Yeah. And then uh, how do, I in the event that the the, the the agreement was not favorable. How do you get yourself out? And the school management co committee is not part of it. Yeah. The head teacher, and you know, they are not there permanently. They are rotated and retiring. So how does the new administration be get able to, to follow through on follow that? Through. Let's, let's get mm. you into this discussion, Wana Khalif. Mm. That kind of confusion is not just at City Primary, mm -hmm. I believe. How widespread, according to the NLC, is this with respect to that confusion where you don't know really 
Um, whether what uh, I think it's it's slightly different to to my question, where you wouldn't know really who owns the land, who donated the land, who's using the land now that s specific things are being paid for by the city or by the county council. How widespread is this? I think this is a, a problem that is widespread throughout the country. It's not only isolated to Nairobi. You will see it everywhere. The background to the dispute would start from how the school land was acquired in the first place. Some of the land on which schools are built have been donated by individuals. Others have come out as a result of settle settlement schemes in, uh, on public land in parts of the country. And others are as a result of the communities donating land in a, you know, an adjudication setting. Everybody moving a little bit backward so that they can create space for school. Others would come out of uh, land buying companies where they, they, they carry out subdivisions and uh, the conditions for approval of the subdivisions is there must be a certain amount of public uh, land for schools and for other public amenities. Mm -hmm. And uh, others are straight grants, maybe a school applies for space in, uh, uh, in an urban set in a very strategic location. Yeah. So the, 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 that's the background on which um, uh, schools are allocated in the first place. All right, and but in terms in terms of the grabbing and the encroaching, yeah, and I'm coming to that. In terms of grabbing now, when it, this grabbing now starts, for example, in, uh, in schools in urban settings where the people consider powerful individuals consider mm -hmm. this to be very strategic, mm -hmm. they would slice a piece of land, and especially schools where the boundaries are not very clear, mm -hmm. where planning has not been done and surveying has not been done, land has been allocated for that purpose, obviously, but over a period. After development, a lot of land will still lie um, unoccupied by the school, and they will replan and slice out pieces of this. And that's what happens, you know, in a, typically in, a, in an urban setting. In a rural setting, like in uh, community lands, where um, land that has been reserved for school purposes is vested in the local authorities, some individuals in the local authorities in the past have come back to to either sell or, uh, as you can put it, grab pieces of that land. Um, in land buying companies, the situation is a little bit different yeah. because yeah, as soon as they get approval for subdivision and sale of all these pieces of land, a huge chunk of land will be left for the purpose uh, of schools and other public utilities, mm -hmm. without which they wouldn't have got approval. Mm -hmm. Now they come back to, uh, to slice a bit of those, and that's where the beginning of the disputes start all over again. All right, Irungu, um, you, your organization came to prominence after, or rather during the, the Langata debacle, where we saw all those horrendous pictures of children being tear gassed because of that fight over the playground. Um, what to you was the significance of that fight for that for that particular piece of land with respect to the discussion we're having now on the grabbing of school land specifically public lands here so i think there are a couple of things first is um you know i think there are parts of um, what happened on january the 19th that really is kenya's darkest hour um to see tear gas um uh, police dogs um police officers in full uh, military gear um uh, weigh in probably about 100 police officers trying to protect uh, um you know a piece of land that essentially uh, belonged to the school um i think that is the first thing but the second thing i think is that um you also saw a great deal of inspiration come out of langata um, mm -hmm. you saw the government be catalyzed into protecting the school to put up a wall within 24 hours you saw a public apology from the cabinet secretary apology that i personally uh, accepted. You saw um, steps taken to ensure that that school re reverted mm -hmm. back to the, the, uh, the school uh, community. And I think we need to honor and, and, and uh, respect the courage of the children and the parents and the school administration for taking a stand and drawing a line really in something that has become uh, in some ways uncontrollable. Um, that's the first significance. Second significance is that since uh, Langata, we have seen at least 5,000 uh, schools come forward um, in response to the presidential directive and the directive of the chairperson of the National Land Commission yeah. um, and apply for title deeds. Uh, that was not the case uh, back in, uh, in January. In fact, in the Matunga report of 2014, there were only three um, out of 205 uh, primary schools that had title deeds. Um, so we've seen a massive uh, response by the public um, to try and secure schools. Um, there, I think you, I saw earlier 350 schools yeah. um, have actually reported mm -hmm. formally to the National Land Commission that their land has been taken. So, uh, you know, the, the public has rallied around the community in that sense. For us, um, we were very clear after the two months that uh, passed that uh, we needed to bring together um, a group of organizations that are um, protective of child rights. 
um, to essentially start a campaign uh, to popularize the, um, uh, the, the, the process by which you apply for title deeds. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the National Land Commission has just published um, a six-step guide for all schools, whether they be the um, uh, 25,000 uh, primary schools across the country yeah. or the six to 8,000 8, schools, secondary schools. And that's a very simple guide which you can find on our website, which is www.shuleangu.com. Dot co dot ke. All right. In terms of being able to report uh, cases of grabbing, you can not only report cases, but you can actually look at how do you go about um, uh, applying for title deeds. And okay. I, with the uh, chairman of the National Land Commission, were at the Kenya Secondary Schools Headmasters Association this week, mm -hmm. and there were 8,000 uh, secondary headmasters. And um, I personally uh, spoke to a number of those headmasters, and one of the things that they said is that those guidelines are just what they're looking for. They were not clear many of them, how they go about applying for this. And it's a very, uh, I guess, a very simple process. It's not 600 steps, not yeah. even 60 steps, it's just six. It's just six steps. But the confusion still remains between the National Lands Commission and the Mil Ministry of Lands and Urban Housing with respect to who exactly is administering um, land and who, um, who, who, who registers titles for these schools, for, for other public institutions. Do we have a definite answer now? I think we are approaching uh, the resolution of that dispute. As you can, uh, you might be aware, uh, there is a committee now made up of about um, um, nine people, two of them from the Ministry of Education, uh, four from the Ministry of Lands, and three from the National Land Commission, specifically for the school titling program. Mm -hmm. And in the six steps that uh, he has just mentioned, my colleague has just mentioned, it is very clear how that is done, where the process of application is done, where the approvals come from other counties, where the application is then submitted, who prepares the leases, in which case is the National Land Commission, mm -hmm. and from there on it is submitted to the ministry to the regis to register. That is the legal process. Mm -hmm. Whatever used to happen and that used to create confusions is totally uh, unnecessary and illegal. Those are the six steps that I hope these schools will use, and that will lead the way for everybody else to use the same. But the, th the, th the things that used to happen, that's what we're trying to get at. Are they still happening with respect to that? There is still meet right now, as I can tell you. And next week, we will be having the Supreme Court to try to decide this matter. But I think with the changes that we have seen, with the, uh, this, the stalemate that has now become so apparent throughout the country, with the people all over the country becoming more and more aware of where the problem is, we are approaching solution, and I hope the su Supreme Court will come out very clear on this. All right, let's just hold those thoughts for a moment. We're taking a short break. Uh, we'll, ha we'll have a more a shaker weigh in on why perhaps the MCAs haven't been, and the MCAs in, in different parts of, uh, of, of the country, not just Nairobi, haven't been weighing in on the debate between uh, on who administers public land in this country, given that land is a devolved function as we continue to discuss this topic. The hashtag is school grabbers. Get your, get your thoughts in on that hashtag. You can also SMS us and we'll sample some of your SMSs during this discussion and possibly also after uh, the break. Stay with KTN Weekend Prime, the point of news. And we're back with that discussion on school grabbers. Remember, the hashtag is school grabbers. And before the break, we were discussing um, the confusion between the national government and the National Lands Commission and the counties with respect to who administers land um, for or for on behalf of uh, the Kenyan public in the counties, whether it's a national government mm -hmm. or it is a, or it is a national lands commission or indeed it's a counties. Now. Constitutionally, mm -hmm. Maura, it says that the counties have a major role mm -hmm. in the administration of land and in the registering of, of uh, title. 
how come we don't hear about this in the in the county assemblies for instance in Nairobi, in, the, in the Nairobi county assembly how come we're not hearing about the issue of of, of grabbing of public land specifically in a yeah. place that's so important to the country no 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 i think um uh, to be honest and also fair to the counties um we've tried uh, in terms of uh, trying to pass legislation to that effect um way before the the presidential directive uh, there was actually a motion that was passed that um, schools should be given their own title deeds. But the difference between probably the rural setup and the urban one, uh, the rural areas, the, school, uh, the schools are actually owned by the community, mm -hmm. where even the, the, the administrators, the teachers, are fairly half of them are from the same areas. But in urban setups, uh, like in Nairobi, you find that there's that disconnect, yep. where there's uh, the schools and the people who go to those schools are far, you know, far, far off and all that. Yeah. In terms of what we are trying to do, we, we even try in terms of, uh, what is it called, oversight. We push the custodian, um, who is actually the chief valuer, to come and bring the documentation. But city hall being city hall that we inherited, mm -hmm. you find that um, probably those title deeds are not, you know, in, in, his, in his custody. So we are now back to you know, the, 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 the letter writing back and forth with the national government and also with the, the commission to try and get that um, and and, and that's my question back. the national lands commission seems to be like the lone ranger with respect to its push to be able to assert its powers as as concerns the constitution it is in the county's interest that this happens why don't we see the counties uh, the counties standing behind the national lands commission or indeed on whichever th side they choose to mm -hmm. as long as they pick a side with respect to getting some clarity on this issue i, I think also in, in, in issues of for capacity and, uh, and, and all that, I think the, the commission and uh, the counties need to partner, um, you know, to make this thing work. Because if it's solely left to the commission, I don't think they have the capacity to be able to manage all these issues, even, even if it's not the can uh, country, right, just within Nairobi. So there has to be a deliberate attempt. However, the, the, the politics of uh, who is in charge where I think they come in, and they are not very helpful when it comes to that. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. just touch on this, because I think this is, this is a big problem. Is that the, essentially, we, we think that the national government will sort the matter. We think then the National Land Commission will sort the matter. Mm -hmm. um, we then push the county assemblies to try and sort out the matter. But actually, frankly speaking, this is a responsibility for 40 million Kenyans. Mm -hmm. um, for every land grab, there is probably at least 1,000 people living around that school mm -hmm. who saw that. I mean, this is the question that I asked in Langata. I don't, I'm not a resident of Langata. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I asked the people um, was, you saw this wall go up you know why didn't you raise an issue about it so I think once we get to a point where we have uh, citizens taking responsibility and owning the schools even if their children don't go to those schools um, that the community actually begins to look at the um, uh, protection of those schools from land grabbing I think that mm -hmm. essentially would take us a long way and then the legal issues can be resolved later yeah. one of the simple things that they could do is essentially, and I think this is where the uh, county assemblies could do this, is push the county governments to act, allocate resources to put permanent walls around these schools. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Because life fences will not protect these schools. Yeah. So I think that's one thing. And, and you know, sometimes we say these are matters that are complex. They're not very complicated. There are only three things we need to do now. We need to protect the schools. We need to title the schools. And thirdly, we need to own those schools. Those schools uh, sometimes behave like they, or rather, they're kind of left like orphans. They Just have, no, the they have some, no communities someone, yeah. that surround them. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then mm -hmm. I think the public pressure and the public interest produces the political interest for politicians and political leaders to come and support that. And then that gives the technical and the um, governance experts, like the National Land Commission, the space to be able to actually govern. Mm -hmm. All right, Carl, if you yeah, I think it's important at this stage to realize that not all schools are vested in the county governments. Mm -hmm. Some schools will be vested in the, in the national government. Mm -hmm. There are even others that are even private. There will be many that are vested in the various local authorities. In either way, in either case, the National Land Commission is the agent of both levels of mm -hmm. government, the national government and the county government. And as you said, uh, us looking like a lone ranger in this matter, we are fighting that war not uh, for ourselves but on behalf of the county governments and at the same time also on behalf of various uh, government institutions that are, that are holding uh, l large tracts of uh, public land in the ministries, various ministries and other management bodies. So it is very important for the counties to come out on this and they haven't done a good job as far as yeah. uh, up to now for the last two years in coming out and actually trying to protect their pieces of, uh, of public land that's vested in them and they have left that war to us. I think we cannot this war win this, war, this fight on our own. 
uh, we have to come together with the uh, county governments and then everybody will have to realize that this is in accordance with the law and we have to do things uh, as required in the constitution and in the enabling legislation. All right, Caliph, uh, we're, we're winding up now and we're running short of time, but I need to ask something that uh, Irungu had mentioned here. The responsibility is of all Kenyans, right? But the National Land Lands Commission also has a role in terms of informing Kenyans about what they can do with respect to registering, with respect to titling. Is it because of the fight uh, that you've been having with uh, the, the ministry or is it because of something else that we're not seeing an active National Lands Commission coming out and informing the public about what exactly they can do with respect to the different categories of land? I think it's mostly because of the fight. I mean, we went right from the time the National Land Commission was formed, this fight started right away. And it's about mandates. And most of those mandates is on public lands and which the ministry did not want to let go. And no matter what the law says, they, they stuck with it. And you, everybody is aware of what the fight is. We have taken this to all levels. We have taken it to parliament. We have taken it to the executive, to the highest level in the executive. We have now in the Supreme Court even to try to resolve this. Mm -hmm. uh, as not getting out, uh, out to people, I think we have done substantially. We have uh, devolved our operations all the way to the counties through the county land management boards. That's where the, our word is right there, or the grassroots. Yeah. And despite the struggles, despite the limited resources that we have, despite the human resources, even limited human resources that uh, we have, we, we have spread out and we have given out notices, we have uh, take, um, um, done land clinics, we have done meetings with the county governments, the governors and the CECs in charge of land, and, and everybody who's concerned. I think we, okay. we have done our, a bit in the shortest time. In the All short right, time finally that we from are you, the public is demanding its pound of flesh with respect to who has been grabbing this land. Statistics, numbers, names. Do, does the National Lands Commission know the majority at least of the people who have been involved in encroachment and grabbing of land? We don't have a statistic right now of exactly how much has been grabbed and who has done that. But we are in the process of doing that. That's what our land management boards are doing right now. And in every county, uh, at both headquarters and in, even in uh, smaller towns, we are compiling that data of public land that is safe, that has been grabbed, and we do this collaboration with county government. All right. Well, as, as we wind up now, yeah. solutions, but maybe you can contribute to uh, what you want to Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, adding to the confusion, remember education, uh, primary, secondary, and uh, tertiary. You know, tertiary is a national government function. Yeah, the county governments deal with um, early childhood and village polytechnics. It becomes also hard in terms of um, uh, putting money so that probably we'd be able to fence off the schools. So uh, the issue of education, which um, historically in Nairobi has been handled by city, uh, by, by the, uh, city, uh, the city county, that is also a gray area in terms of funding. Secondly, uh, in terms of so solutions and looking forward, we need to find a way of um, the, the county land boards need to find a way of working with the county government because like a city like nairobi has a fully functional uh, department in terms of land and um what how do they come in together and what are the retribu uh, it's called retribu retributive uh, justice mm -hmm. for for places where you know go to schools like rescos primary it has this chunk of land half of it now is block of flats you know flats that uh, they don't know who. what happens once you realize that this were um uh, this land your, your land was all this big. Yeah. So what happens to now the people who already now have, uh, you know, who title have deeds and, and yeah. have properties yeah. and they've gotten loans with them? So I, we, that, uh, those are things that probably the commission can help us in terms of understanding uh, these are the quick wins you can get. Because if you don't know, there's also another school like Muranga Road Primary. Yeah. We thought when you were growing up, the school was up to the river, only to know, you know, halfway that um, it is now uh, actually the beacons were way in eating into the school. So the, the, the parcel is very, very small. Mm -hmm. What happens when you realize actually they were right and um, the guys who, gra who got it eventually were wrong? So those are the issues. If we are able to understand that, then now probably the public would feel something to go in because um urban uh because of the other urban setups i think people get how long you know wherever you live i don't think you live there especially if you're renting mm -hmm. more than 10 years you move and all, all that mm -hmm. so if you are able to feel confident that i can come out and stand for this school and it's going to benefit and then again also in terms of the the playing fields they can't yeah. just be idle like that right. we need to find a way of the schools uh, working with the communities around to help those uh, to 
to make those uh, land active. Mm -hmm. I and, think that and, and the step. politician in you is keeping you going. Let's let's give uh, yeah. Irungu a, a mm -hmm. word uh, here as we wind up. So I think, uh, John Allen, permit me to talk to the um, to your viewers directly because you are a yeah. national uh, station. I think what I would request you to do is for everybody watching this show to download um, the uh, guidelines on uh, how you can apply for title deeds. Uh, print them out, walk to the nearest um, uh, public school, whether it is a primary school or a secondary school, look for the headmaster or headmistress and give them a copy of those guidelines and ask them, are you applying for your title? That is what we need to do now. There is a sense of urgency. The next eight weeks really matter because this is the second term. Um, and uh, the schools will then go into recess, then there's an examination period. Mm -hmm. um, and we know what happens during the year of, uh, of campaigning and elections. So we only have eight weeks for this to happen. And I think um, if uh, by, you know, in, in the next two months, the National Land Commission had something like 30,000 applications, um, mm -hmm. we, you could invite the commissioner back um, mm -hmm. to, to tell us how many um, title deeds progress. have been given out. And I think one of the things that uh, I would say to the politicians and the political leaders, our representatives, is that there is actually very powerful, uh, there is something very powerful in delivering title deeds to schools mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. remains as a legacy mm -hmm. of leadership mm -hmm. to that community. Um, there is much more power in that than essentially using your political leadership um, to go through the, uh, uh, what uh, uh, commissioners call the, the, the confusion of land allocation mm -hmm. and essentially grabbing one acre. What is one acre when you could actually give uh, a school historically a legacy mm -hmm. for lifetime? All right. I think that's where we'll leave it. Irungu Houghton from SID, thank you very much for joining us, as well as you, Maura Shege, and Abdul Qadir Khale from the National Lands Commission. Of course, the discussion tonight is one that should keep going with respect to the protection of schools across the, county, uh, across the country, of course, here in Nairobi County, which we, where we based our discussion. Think about this, for instance. Where would the national champions, the national volleyball champions be if they didn't have a school playground? And that's something that people need to consider often with respect to the legacy that we're trying to maintain in, in terms of keeping land safe for school children, keeping land safe for Kenyans. But of course, Yvonne Okwara has been following this discussion and has a number of points that she'd like to contribute with respect to trying to synthesize what we've been, been discussing for the past 30 minutes or so, Yvonne. A pertinent topic of discussion, especially when most of us remember that we all went to one of these local schools. One of the tweets that's coming in today is someone saying they're going to drive by their school and actually speak to the principal and just see whether their land is safe or not. So here is the point of our discussion tonight. First and foremost, proper titling procedures are required. If not, then the appetite for land grabbing in this country, driven by greed and, of course, market forces, will just continue to grow higher and higher. Schools, and they're not the only ones at risk, indeed all public institutions as well, need to ensure that they get their proper titles. And we're glad that at least 5,000 schools have now applied for their title deeds following that presidential directive. Secondly, of course, we need to realize the power that we have in terms of making sure that school property remains the property of schools. As was proven with what happened at Langata Road Primary School, that activism is what led to Langata Road Primary getting back their title and indeed the presidential directive to all schools to start applying for that. So let us not underestimate the power that we have. And indeed, you're also talking about where you can report this to. The National Land Commission is always open and we'll be giving you ways in which you can get in touch with that, as well as the Shuleyangu Initiative. We will continue to give you details. Irungu Houghton has given some of those during the interview you at the end of this discussion we will tell you what role you can continue to play and finally the endless wrangles between the National Land Commission and the Ministry of Lands and the demarcation of roles between the national government and the county government as regards the administration of lands is what provides a lacuna if you like for land grabbers to play games with land owned by public institutions and schools in particular some of the areas that need looking into is who maintains the public land register the national government, the county government, the duplication of roles. Why do we still have a national land surveyor and a county land surveyor? This confusion will only give an open space to land grabbers in this country. That tonight is a point. <laughs>